The first note I ever got when I pitched the show is Donnie is dead. And, and I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, they wanted one uh, brother sister rivalry from the. I said, no, you need Donnie in there. <laughs> because I wanted to just create this world of he was the complete outcast. And if it's just a sibling rivalry, it paints it too much back and forth. And I feel like we've all seen that show before mm-hmm. and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Uh, but I'm just saying, Nick. Uh, no, it still hurts. It still hurts. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> we oh, actually... So I've told you that before. Yeah. So oh, this. Yeah. So we we've discussed this already. But since you're here now, it's yeah. great. Uh, I had gone back to school during uh, the filming of Even Stevens, and I was studying philosophy. So I was on this little kick of trying to really analyze everything and write out these great essays about it. And so I wrote out. I wrote an essay called "A Meditation on Donnie." Uh-huh. And presented it to you as an argument for why Donnie needed a meteor part in the show. And what yeah. was your thesis essentially in that? You um, said it's vital. I, I can. Yeah, there was some kind of. There, there's basically I explained that Donnie has more depth than the show was giving him, mm. and was trying to. No, I was trying to be serious and funny at the same time. Mm-hmm. I don't think either works successfully mm-hmm. uh, by Matt's expression. Uh, and <laughs> and Matt just took a deep breath and educated me on script writing and how there's an A storyline and a B storyline and how both are essential. You need the B storyline to make the A storyline work, but the B storyline is always going to be the B storyline. Mm-hmm. And then he also told me about how Disney actually wanted to kill Donnie. Yeah, Don- legit. Legit wanted <laughs> to kill Donnie. Donnie is dead. You need a shirt that hey, says Donnie's dead. I got dead. an idea for the next show. Yeah. Donnie is dead. This yeah. is great. No, um, but you yeah, know, I, I vaguely remember that that interaction. Um, you're not the first actor to ever come to an executive producer with pitches for their character. It's just maybe the first with an entire essay, though. Yeah. Like, that was actually pretty impressive. Actually. That was colorful. I don't think he was impressed. Aww. Nah, nah, it was, it was, it was nice. It was nice. <laughs> but I do remember you, you do saying that you had some idea for some story arches, and you know it's usually a story arc, but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't really point that out. I don't know that. Not not mind, then. I probably but now. I probably still I probably still make that mistake. It yeah. couldn't have been too big of a coincidence though, because he's studying philosophy, and I think in the next episode, Scrub Day, he has this little arc where you know he has like the bald head and then the, the toga, and he's oh. playing the philosophy. Maybe right? he's playing Gandhi. Yeah, right. I played Gandhi. I played Gandhi. That, Gandhi. Yeah. 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 So what about Beans? What about what happened with the creation beans, of Beans? Beans is legendary. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. like you guys know the story of the casting session where. He came in and do you guys know that story? I'm He's sure. told us it, but we'd like to hear it from you. Yeah, because I forgot a lot of it too. So maybe you can help me. Well, you, okay. So we we needed to skew younger. Yeah. We needed a younger presence, and so we saw you know as you do for a, a, a recurring character that we weren't sure how much he was going to be in in it. You, you see a lot of people. You see 20, 30, 40 people. Beans came in. Uh, Steve came in and told a joke. The, the reading wasn't great, um, but he told this joke, and it was kind of like, it was a lot like Donnie coming in to pitch story arches. Um, <laughs> he, 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 you, you were sort of going, oh, this poor kid. Like, mm. and, and you remember the joke. It was something about, I'm a rock and yeah, a rock. It's about yeah. a pirate yeah. and stuff. And the six producers were sitting in there kind of going, oh, boy, this poor kid. He, <laughs> we should really tell him not to be in the business. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, so the session ends and everybody's tired and it's six o'clock and we're sort of like looking at headshots and going, what about this? What about this? And then I don't know, even know who said, what about the kid with the joke? And it was this weird moment where everybody's going, no, that's the stupid. Wait a minute. <laughs> What about that kid with the joke? <laughs> what about the fucking kid with the fucking joke? Yeah, That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and One the next thing I know, <clears throat> it's like this kid's in the show and he's brilliant. Yeah. And uh, and then um, we were pitching around. I, I just said, I don't care what the character is. All I know is this kid is obsessed with bacon. <laughs> and, and other than that, like... That was the pitch. So believe- that was my thesis on beans. Wow. He loves bacon. Well, so what about the whole <clears throat> what about the whole storyline with the parents being aliens that we never saw? I don't remember much about that one. 
I don't remember. I, mean, I, I, I thought that was genius. Yeah, I, it was great. It was I do great. want to jump back here because I know you said Spivey was originally autobiographical, and you know you you saw yourself as as Lewis in the show. What mm -hmm. about the other characters? Were they also people in your life? Yeah, was mm -hmm. Ren? Was, did, you didn't have an older sister, right? Mm -hmm. No, I just felt like everybody around me was a little more put together, and that it was okay. it was just sort of. I think Donnie was probably the the guy I wanted to be. You know, I was kind of athletic, but always. You know, like getting my ass handed to me oh, on the okay. football so field, and yeah. almost visions of like who you wanted to be, yeah, or like yeah. stuff like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's kind of. Wow. I want to thank you for having been this very sweet. When we did our, um, remember we did a, a Zoom reunion, a Zoom yeah. union, yeah. Um, and it was really sweet because I think you had reiterated something I'd heard you say in the past and executives had told me that you said that I'd given you one of the better auditions that you'd experience. Yeah. I've never, <laughs> I've never. Uh, and let's, I've, let's talk about Chrissy that. Chrissy just wanted to yeah. bring that up Literally, right now. Let's I've talk been relatively it. mood. Okay, mute. <laughs> yeah. I want to, I want to, yeah. Because it's true. I mean, if it wasn't true, I wouldn't say it. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I do. But anyway, <laughs> you, honestly, from, you didn't even have to do anything. You walked in, and by the first step you took in that room, I said, "That's her." Yeah, she had. It was just. Oh that's, my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you were all I put together that. in your little blue blazer, uh, and you're just. I did not come to fuck around. Yeah. No, you were. Wow. It was. Just I bought like, that on on credit, and that, that we had to buy. We had to pay for that <laughs> suit. Okay. But I think this is funny for anyone who's like pursuing this business that so much of the audition has nothing to do with your read. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the read is important, mm -hmm. but it's like, they, they always say it's like, you have to make yourself memorable in some uh -huh. way. Uh -huh. And I used to do the stupidest shit to try to get a job. I mean, I bring in a can of like, no beans or some shit and open the can of beans you should do eating. that yeah, right. I, I, you should be I've like had, this is my old identity this is who i am oh, yeah. i told that joke yeah that I, I, I've, <laughs> I've had casting directors say please no props before well, and, and you take those weird risks just because yeah. at least they remember you out of like the, the 50 to 100 the people that come but i gotta i gotta tell you <laughs> let's not let's not put some bad info out there because i think a lot of times i've seen it mostly fail because For sure. honestly, what what you two have in common, even though the auditions were vastly different, was um, it was your essence. It was really the essence of who you were that got you the part. It wasn't shtick. It wasn't the yeah. blazer. Mm -hmm. It was just that put together. You know, in your case, the put together vibe, and in your case, the sort of I don't know what that that you still have it. It's that you know kookiness yeah. or <laughs> inherent. Uh, well, thank you. Danger. You're yeah. dangerous, Steve. Well, I feel that. No, but you, yeah, you are dangerous because you, mm. you have. Uh, unpredictable. Let's say it like, let's, let's say it, yeah. let's put it like yeah. that. Yeah. And I am not put together though, Matt. Can we just talk about it? Yeah, that's acting, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, yeah, no, I think what was really lovely growing up in such a safe environment like our set one, you were not a creepy creator dude that mm -hmm. we've heard things and rumors of in the past, but you've been such a wonderful and, mm -hmm. and kind person to all of us. I feel yeah. like anytime we've tried to reach out, he's been accessible to us and and supportive. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I mean, the, the, the door, especially when you're on a TV show, if to have the opportunity to walk into the room and sit down with the creator of the show and even have the privilege of discussing your part mm -hmm. is, is, is I, don't, I don't know how common that is, but it's, it's nice to be able to do that. You've continued to work with Disney over the years. What changes have you seen in just the development of children's programming? When Even Stevens came about, it, I felt like it was flying under the radar. I felt like kids TV wasn't that big of a deal. It was kind of the minor leagues and stuff like that. And I felt like that our show was kind of the first show that, and I don't really, I'm not trying to say that even Stevens created this marketplace, but now, but it also sort of was at the right in the, the pocket of the wave in terms of it becoming a big business. And so there's a lot more scrutiny now and a lot more corporate, decision making and stuff like that. So we were sort of just allowed to do what we wanted to do. Thanks so much for watching this clip of the Even More Stevens podcast. For full episodes, check us out on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts.